Peter went home amazed at what he'd seen. Amazed. Not just in the amazed in the moment, but amazed in the way that will transform his life. For as we will read in the other resurrection appearances, and as we know from last week, and all of the story of Christ's passion, the betrayal, the falling away, the denial, Peter and the other apostles were gripped by fear. They made choices about their relationship to Jesus and one another out of that fear. They were afraid that they would be arrested. They were afraid that they would be tried and convicted and killed just as Jesus had. They thought the authorities were coming after them next. And then something happened. Because the next thing we know, Peter and the apostles are out not simply continuing in Jesus' teaching, not simply saying what a great guy he was, but they up the ante and start saying that he has risen from the grave and that they have seen him. And they do this with peace and confidence and boldness. What was it that brought them from fear, cowering denial, to confident, bold proclamation? The it is what we celebrate this morning. It is the resurrection. It is because they experienced Jesus Christ. And that event helped them move from reacting and making choices out of fear to making choices out of love and peace and confidence in God. And again, they didn't just simply have a slight change. Hear words from the book, The Acts of the Apostles, which is really the volume two following on the Gospel of Luke that we just spent time reading throughout the season of Lent. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus, Acts 4.13. And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant your service to speak your word with all boldness, Acts 4.29. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Acts 4.31. But Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles, and described for them how on the road Paul had seen the Lord, who had spoken to him, how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. Acts 9.27. So Paul went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord, Acts 9, 28. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken first to you. And since you rejected and judge yourselves to be unworthy of eternal life, we are now turning to the Gentiles, Acts 13, 46. So Paul and Barnabas remained for a long time, speaking boldly, for the Lord who testified to the word of his grace by granting signs and wonders to be done through them. I like this one. Paul began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. Paul entered the synagogue and for three months spoke out boldly and argued persuasively about the kingdom of God, Acts 19.8. Paul lived there for two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all, yes, you guessed it, boldness and without hindrance. Now remember, 
The environment didn't change. The whole reason that all the apostles felt afraid, all their worry about what the authorities might do to them, that all came true. They were arrested, they were beaten, they were killed themselves for proclaiming Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah. What changed was not the environment of the other. What changed was the environment within them because they had experienced Christ, risen from the grave. And in that experience, all that Jesus had done, all that Jesus had taught, fell into place like putting the jigsaw puzzle together and finally seeing the image on the box. They knew it to be true. They knew that they were in a close and intimate and dynamic relationship with God who created all things and created them. They knew that God was walking with them, that they were filled by the Spirit that had been in Jesus and the Spirit that had moved in the beginning of time to make all things. And so they proclaimed with confidence and peace and joy and love the good news of Jesus. Fast forward 2,000 years. You and I gather together this morning, outside and all around us, are stories of violence, poverty, suffering, death, and grief, whether it be violence on our own streets or abroad. The word terror becomes an everyday word. And the choice for you and I is how will we respond? Will you and I lock ourselves behind doors for fear what might happen to us? Or will you and I throw open the doors and go out into the synagogues and the temples and the public squares and everywhere we are and proclaim with boldness and confidence God's peace and God's love? Will we not only speak of God's forgiveness, but will we demonstrate it? Will you and I, in word and deed, share this good news that we celebrate this morning? You and I have just spent 40 days in Lent that we speak about at the front and in the back end of it as a holy observance of Lent. Many of us have adopted various disciplines, giving up and taking on. And that whole season of Lent is about us understanding and moving forward into a deeper relationship with God. But it's about us. And what we need to understand is that we gather here this morning not at the finish line of the Lenten observance, but at the starting blocks for the Easter celebration. What we have done from Lent has been calisthenics and stretching and strengthening so that we might go out into the world and proclaim with great confidence and boldness that while all that we see out there, all the violence and the corruption and the suffering is true and real, there is another way. There is a way to live with peace and joy. There is a truth that we walk with God and that God is with us in the mountaintop and in the deepest valley. Will you and I have the strength and the honesty and the integrity and the opportunity to live with amazement at what we have seen and what we have experienced? Will you and I go out to our family members, our coworkers, our neighbors, our friends, and those who cross the street before us and around us and say that there is another way Will we share both by words and our presence the peace of God and the possibility for joy and the truth and the power that comes when we love the other person? Will you and I move out of our fear and move in to love? Our world is hungry. Our world is filled with fear and terror. And what they need from us 
is that we be emissaries and ambassadors of Christ, that you and I pick up the baton from those who've gone before to share this story and this good news. They need us to live the most famous split infinitive that has ever existed in the English language. They need us to boldly go. To boldly go and share the good news. For when you and I make ourselves available to do that, when we say to God, thank you for all that you have done for us, Thank you for the gift of your Son and the gift of your Holy Spirit and baptism and use us. Then God shows up. And it's not about what we do, but about what God can do through us. And the God who created all that we see and do, the God who raised Jesus from the grave, is not done. And so may you and I move beyond our Lenten discipline to an Easter discipline. May you and I adopt ways that say, in the next 50 days, I am going to be committed to proactively and intentionally sharing the news of Christ's resurrection in word and deed. And when you and I do that, God's Spirit will work through us to bring joy and healing to others, just as God did in the days of Peter and Paul and Mary Magdalene and Priscilla and Aquila. God is good, and God is waiting for us to act. So let's do it with all boldness and joy. Amen.